Good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. The Secretary General and the Prime Minister will uh, hold uh, short opening remarks and then we'll have time for just a couple of questions. Secretary General. Prime Minister, it is a pleasure uh, to welcome you to NATO headquarters. Um, your visit so soon uh, after your appointment shows that Bulgaria is strongly committed uh, to our alliance. Uh, NATO's core task, of course, is security, and uh, Bulgaria has shown an impressive commitment to building security uh, in Europe and beyond. Bulgarian troops uh, are doing just that uh, in Afghanistan, where they are helping to train uh, the Afghan security forces. Just two days ago, um, Afghanistan's army and, and police began taking the lead for security uh, in the very final provinces of the country. Um, that is a real milestone, and Bulgaria helped to make it possible. Bulgaria is also building security in Kosovo, uh, where your servicemen and women are helping to train the Kosovo security force and develop their civil protection capabilities. And you are a keen supporter of NATO's uh, Building Integrity Initiative, which helps to reduce the risk of corruption in the defense and security sector. All these are valuable contributions, and I thank you for them. Your commitment is even more valuable at a time when all allies uh, face tough financial choices. Bulgaria is a firm supporter of smart defense, our new guiding principle for working together to provide the capabilities this alliance needs. Your uh, you support a, a shared project to provide a C-17 heavy transport aircraft, a vital lifeline to our troops on operations. And you are one of a group of countries which will acquire five unarmed spotter drones to allow NATO commanders to see over the horizon in any weather and at any time of day or night. This is the sort of commitment we need, and we will continue to need it in the future as we look to reverse the decline uh, in defense spending and move back towards healthy levels. Prime Minister, let me thank you again for your country's contributions and I look forward to your support and your commitment in the months and years to come. Mr. Prime Minister. Good thing, General and Secretary. Mr. Secretary General, allow me first to uh, thank you for um, accepting our um, request for invitation on such a short notice. We requested this uh, practically first visit outside Sofia, uh, my first visit as Prime Minister, uh, in order to um, emphasize upon uh, uh, continuity uh, in uh, Bulgaria's foreign policy and our engagement uh, with uh, the Euro Atlantic Pact. We will uh, keep our engagements as they, they are and to um, uh, broaden the cooperation within the pact. I take this opportunity once again to um, affirm that we are a um, uh, professional uh, government with a program and uh, we will keep uh, the program um, the program that we announced and we received uh, support from for it uh, in the parliament and we will be working so as to improve economic development and uh, the social, social situation of the Bulgarian citizens. Uh, I hope that when uh, the economy um, improves, 
we'll, we will be able to focus more, more attention on rearming the Bulgarian army, a process that uh, was started in the past. Past. But uh, in uh, the years of economic crisis, uh, it slowed down in Bulgaria as well as in, in other uh, member countries. Uh, within uh, our capabilities, we will participate in the mission in Afghanistan in next year. And uh, I'd like uh, to assure you once again that we will support the um, uh, integration of all our uh, neighbors uh, from the Western Balkans in NATO. Uh, we uh, think that in this way we will create even more um, stability in, in the region. Thank you once again, Mr. Secretary General. And I'll be glad to meet you in Sofia. We haven't got a lot of time, so uh, I'd like you to please stick to one question and make clear who that question is addressed to. We'll start with Bulgarian National TV. Thank you, Anna. Mr. Rasmussen, in such difficult times for Bulgaria, the Prime Minister said the budget is in a very difficult state. Do you fear that this could have as a result unfollowing of the engagements of Bulgaria and NATO? And Mr. Prime Minister, do you guarantee that it will keep the engagement? Of course, the Prime Minister and I have discussed uh, the economic situation in Bulgaria, including um, the level of uh, the defense uh, budget. And I expressed my concerns, uh, as I have done whenever I meet uh, political leaders from, from uh, the, the alliance. Uh, of course, I understand very well the economic situation uh, and the political situation in allied uh, nations. Uh, when governments are forced to cut budgets across the board, uh, it is difficult to suggest that the Minister of Defence should be exempted uh, from that. But I also have to stress that, of course, there is a lower limit as to how little you can spend on defence and still live up to our uh, obligations. Having said that, uh, I appreciate uh, that Bulgaria has stayed committed uh, to our uh, operations in Afghanistan, in Kosovo, and um, uh, Bulgaria also participates uh, in a number of multilateral uh, projects. So despite the economic challenges, we see a very strong commitment from uh, Bulgaria. And today, uh, the Prime Minister also assured me that once the economy recovers, uh, that will also be reflected uh, in um, increasing uh, defense investments and, of course, continued modernization uh, of the Bulgarian armed forces. I uh, don't know what exactly you mean uh, uh, with uh, keeping up with the engagements. Uh, we will uh, uh, keep them as uh, they were undertaken. I assure the Secretary General that at this uh, point it will be impossible to increase the uh, budget for defense, but uh, at the first uh, possible moment in the future, we will uh, improve the, f uh, the funding, especially for modernization of the Bulgarian army. Quick last question to National Public Radio. Uh, Terry Schultz with National Public Radio and CBS News, and also on behalf of Reuters, Adrian Croft. Um, Mr. Secretary, two days ago you were in Kabul handing over full command of security operations for the country on a day which, uh, over which there was really a sense of optimism when President Karzai said he would start peace talks with the Taliban. The U.S. said it would be involved. Now there are no peace talks planned. And President Karzai, perhaps more importantly for NATO, has suspended talks with the United States over the bilateral security agreement, which also holds up NATO's SOFA agreement. Um, could you address both the mm, sort of up and down of the, of the possible peace talks and also where this leaves NATO, with, at NATO and the, the U.S. as the lead force in ISAF with no, no security arrangement negotiations? Are we in a dangerous situation right now? 
I don't think we are in a dangerous um, uh, situation. I had very good meetings uh, with President Karzai, and uh, based on the conversation we had, I am confident that at the end of the day, we will reach an agreement uh, on uh, the security arrangements uh, that will create the framework for the NATO training mission resolute support uh, after 2014. Of course, reconciliation is never an easy uh, process in any part uh, of, of the world. Um, at the Chicago uh, summit uh, last year, we, we made clear that the process leading to reconciliation must be Afghan-led and Afghan-owned. Um, we said that reconciliation is a process which must include the breaking of ties to international uh, terrorism, renouncing uh, violence, uh, and compliance uh, with the Afghan uh, constitution. Um, security transition is a critical part of ensuring stability uh, in Afghanistan uh, and in the region. Uh, and I think peace talks uh, could reinforce security gains and further contribute to Afghanistan's long-term security and unity. So I hope uh, such uh, talks uh, will start sooner rather than later. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we don't have time for any follow-ups. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.